So this is real love. So when the time came, then uh, Maharaj uh, Dashrath wanted to give the throne to uh, Sri Ram. And he asked Vashesh Ji that what is the auspicious time? And he said, oh, tomorrow only is the auspicious time. So we should do this tomorrow itself. So Maharaj Dashrath was very happy and then he ordered everyone to make all the arrangements. And he also announced in his assembly that tomorrow Sri Ram will be crowned as the king. So at that time, um, Bharat had gone to his uh, maternal, uh, to his grandparents' uh, home. Uh, Kakai, she had a maid servant whose name was Mantra. And when she came to know this, she approached Kakai and said, do you know what is going to happen? Maharaj Dashrath has announced that Sri Ram is going to become the king. Do you know what this means? If he becomes the king, then Kaushalya will become more powerful. And throughout the rest of your life, you and Bharat will have to live as the slaves. But when Kakai heard this, she said, Oh, you are so foolish. You always think like this. Actually, this is such a happy news. I am so happy that Sri Ram is going to become the king. The mantra said, I know you from childhood, that you cannot think in the future, and you are very durbuddhi, you are very foolish. So like this, she tried to give her so many wrong uh, uh, logics, and finally, Kakari also remembered that what Sri Ram had, actually she had forgotten, but when mantra was saying this, then she also recalled that how Sri Ram had come and asked her, to ask for these two boons. So she also then finally started behaving as if she had come in the trap of Mantara. So then she, what she did, she gave up her uh, royal clothes and wore some tattered, tattered clothes, uh, gave up all her jewelry and then went to Kopa Bhavan. So this is a place in the palace where when the queens were very upset, they would go and sit there. So she went to this Kop Bhavan and in the evening Maharaj Dasarath came and he also used to love Kakai a lot. So he came to tell her the good news. But he found that she was not there. So he asked all the people there, all the servants, where is she? She is gone to Kop Bhavan. Why is she gone to Kop Bhavan? So he went there and saw that she was sitting there in a very furious, despondent mood. So, in a very sweet words, he inquired, What, my dear queen, what has happened? So at that time, she said, Oh, you have decided to give the kingdom to Sri Ram, and you want me to become the slave of Kaushalya for the rest of my life? So like this, she started uh, saying to Maharaj Dashrat. So, uh, Maharaj Dashrat said, Oh, this is a very good news. She said, This might be good news for you. But for me, this is not good news. So either you decide to give me the two boons now that I asked for, or otherwise I will give up my life. So at that time she asked for the two boons to banish Sri Ram to the forest for 14 years and to make Bharat the king. When Maharaj Dashrath heard this, he was heartbroken. As if all these great plans he had made, nothing was going to happen. His cherished desire to see Sri Ram as the king would not be fulfilled. So he was very, very disturbed and he fainted. He also, so in so many ways, tried to pacify Kakai, to cajole her. He fell at her feet, but she would not listen to whatever he was saying. So finally he fainted. Seeing this, Kakai sent some maid servants to go and get Sri Ram. Sri Ram at that time was in the palace of Queen Kaushalya, Mother Kaushalya, asking her for blessings. So, Mother Kaushalya had made a plate of aarti to greet uh, Sri Ram, but this aarti plate fell from her uh, hands. So she was thinking, this is sign of some, this is of something very bad that is going to happen. Sri Ram had also gone to Sita Devi and asked her that tomorrow you should fast and then pay because we both have to be crowned as the king and the queen. So like this, he was also making all the preparations. At that time, this uh, maid servant came and said, Oh Prince, Maharaj is calling you. So he went there, and when he went to the Pope Bhavan, he saw that Maharaj Dashrath was crying bitterly. 
and his condition was as if he was going to die right now. So he was not in a condition to speak. So he asked Katai, what has happened mother? So she said, I had asked for two boons that he had promised me a long time ago. And I had asked him to send you to the forest for 14 years and to make Hara the king. And as a result, this has become his condition. And why did he plan to make you the king now? He had sent Bharat to uh, his grandparents' home and in his absence, he was making all this plan to make you the king. If he wanted to do this in a transparent way, he should have made this announcement when Bharat was right here. So all of this, he's trying to hit me from the back, stab me in the back. So like this, she was uh, <clears throat> saying, so Sri Ram said, Oh, mother, you should have just told this to me. Why did you have to disturb the father? This is actually very good news. Since when I was a child, from the beginning, we have all grown together, all the four brothers. And so many times I would think that all four of us should become the king. And now by your blessings, that is going to happen. I am very happy to go to the forest and Bhala should become the king. Actually, I am very, very pleased with this. So next day, he uh, decided to leave for the forest and Sita Ji and Lakshman Ji also uh, decided to uh, accompany him and he took the form of Vanvasis, so gave up all his royal clothes and were just like uh, mendicants, he wore the clothes. And Kekai at that time was manifesting this pastime of becoming very stone-hearted uh, person. And she even asked Sita Ji to wear such clothes. Even she gave up all her royal dress and dressed like mendicants. And they went to the forest. And once Sri Ram left, Maharaj Dashras, he, was, he could not uh, <coughs> take this separation. He could not. And saying, Haram, Haram, he left his body. But at that time, Bharat was not there, and Shatruhan was also not there, and Lakshman and Sridham had gone to the forest, so none of the sons were there. So his final rites could not be performed. So Vashishti said that his body should be kept in a big pool of uh, oil, and only when Bharat comes, only then the final rites could be performed. Bharat Shatruhan, Bharat अदा ननिहाल में गए हुए थे राजा का प्रकोप परलोक हो गया महाराज दशरथ का राम लक्ष्मण सीता वन में चले गए महाराज महर्षि वशिष्ठ जी ने दूत भेजा भरत के पास में जल्दी से आ जाओ बहुत आवश्यक कार्य है वहां से भरत जी और शत्रुघ्न जी अपने मामा से आदेश लेकर और अयोध्या नगरी में आए जब अयोध्या नगरी में आए तो पहले नगर में प्रवेश करते ही उनका बड़ा स्वागत होता था आज किसी ने उनका स्वागत नहीं किया था न उनसे कुछ बातचीत किया बल्कि उनको देख करके सब उल्टे अपने अपने काम में बड़े रूप से चले गए ऐसे मालूम होता है मालूम होता था भरत ने देखा आज तो ये नगरी विधवा हो गई है कोई उल्लास नहीं देख रहे हैं नगर में जो आनंद था पहले होता था वो भी नहीं है राम तो हमारे स्वागत के लिए आते किंतु वो भी नहीं आए क्या कुछ बात है अनहोली भीतर प्रवेश किया और कई कई के घर में पहले गए क्योंकि महाराज दशरथ वहीं पर रहा करते थे अधिकतर कई कई के पास में इसलिए राजा से मिलने के लिए पहले गए उनको प्रणाम करके तब और सब नाम करेंगे तो वहां गए कई कई के भवन में तो वहां देखा वो तो कई कई विधवा के रूप में है सिंधु भी नहीं है और सफेद कपड़े पहन करके खड़े हैं अरे भैया पिताजी कहाँ है पिताजी तब पर लोग सिधार गए भैया राम कहाँ है तो वो तो वनवास गए किस लिए तुम्हारे लिए केवल तुम्हारा भविष्य दे करके तुम राजा हो इसलिए मैंने राजा से दो बार मांगा कि एक बार मैं 
रामचंद्र चौदह वर्ष के लिए बन जाए दूसरे पद से मांगा कि तुम्हारा राज्यभिषेक हो रामचंद्र जी तो बन चले गए और इधर राजा भी राम के शोक में हा राम हा राम हा राम कहते हुए परलोक सिद्धार्थ गए बेटा जो कुछ किया है मैंने तुम्हारे लिए किया है भरत जी सुनते ही संग रह गए और आंखों से आंसू गिरने लगे आज से तू मेरी माँ भैया नहीं है यदि राम भैया मुझको क्रोध नहीं करते तो आज तुम्हें तलवार से काट दिया होता कल तलवार से तब तुम्हें नहीं काटूंगा किंतु याद रखना अब से तुम्हारी और मेरी माता और बेटा का कोई संबंध नहीं रहा आज से मेरे लिए तुम तो महारानी कह कही रहे मैं तुम्हारा पुत्र नहीं है तुम हमको अपना पुत्र मत मानना कह कही देख करके जिसके लिए मांगा हमने राज्य और वो जी ऐसा हमारे लिए कर रहे और यह कह करके इतने में कुबड़ी आई जैसे बड़ी प्रसन्न हो करके शत्रुघ्न निर्णय के इसी के कारण इसने मंत्रणा दे करके सलाह दे करके कराया इसलिए उसको जमीन पर गिरा करके लात से मारा भरत जी ने कहा जैसे स्त्री नहीं होती तो कोई बात नहीं थी स्त्री है इसलिए इसको जान से मत मारो नहीं तो राम भैया प्रसन्न हो गए छोड़ दिए मैया कौशिल्या के पास में गए और वहां जाते हुए कहा कि मैया तुम हमको क्षमा कर मैं मेरा इसमें तनिक भी हाथ नहीं है मैं इस विषय में कुछ नहीं जानता हमारा कोई दोष नहीं है कौशल्या बेटा मैं तुम्हें जानती हूँ तुम्हारा कुछ भी बात फिर राज्यसभा में आए और राज्यसभा में आकर के पिताजी का दास संस्कार किया और फिर राज्य सभा में मंत्रियों को और नगर वासियों को बुलाया और वशिष्ठ जी से पूछा जे महाराज हमारा क्या कर्तव्य है बतलाइए मुझे क्या करना चाहिए बेटा राज्य तो तुमको पिताजी दे ही गए हैं अब राज्य को संचालन करो चौदह वर्ष के लिए पर बोले ये मेरे लिए नहीं हो सकता बड़ा भाई राज्य का अधिकारी होता है मैं राम को कल मनाने के लिए जाऊंगा सारी सेनाओं के साथ में और कौशल्या मैया सुमित्रा मैया को लेकर के आप चलेंगे और सारी प्रजा चलेगी वहीं पर हम चलेंगे और उनको किसी प्रकार से मना करके लाएंगे और उनको किसी प्रकार से राज्य दे देंगे मैं उनका सेवक बन करके उनकी सेवा करेंगे सवेरा हुआ और सारी लेकर के सेनाओं को वहां गए चित्रकूट पर उनको बताता चित्रकूट गए उधर लक्ष्मण देखा जैसे सारी सेनाओं के साथ में भरता रहा है आराम से युद्ध करने के लिए शायद आ रहा है पेड़ पर से चढ़ करके देखा और फिर उतर करके धनुष बांध लिए और लेकर के बड़ी जल्दी से निकल रहे थे राम ने पूछा कि कहा जा रहे हो अरे भरत आ रहा है राज्य को हड़पने के लिए तुम्हें मारने के लिए हमें मारने के लिए आ रहा है मैं उसे आज जरूर मारूंगा चाहे ब्रह्मा विष्णु भी उसकी रक्षा करे उसकी रक्षा नहीं करो हम तो उसे आज मारेंगे ही किसी प्रकार से सोच विचार करके काम करो धैर्य धारण करके देखो वो आ करके क्या करता है देखना यदि हमसे लड़ाई करना चाहता है तुम उसे मार डालना उसको देखो तो सही भरत जैसा भाव भूतल में नहीं है हमारे प्रति उसका जैसा भातृष्ण नहीं है वैसा किसी को नहीं है उसे आने दो देखो ये क्या करता है उनको शांत करके बैठाया भरत चित्रकूट के नीचे ही सारी सेनाओं को वहीं रख दिया और महर्षि वशिष्ठ और दोनों माताओं को लेकर के जब वहां से आ रहे थे भरती तो कई कई कौशिल्या मैया के पास में गए पूरी जैसे बहन मैं भी साथ में चलना चाहती हूँ 
मैं कहते ठीक है चलो और जब चलने लगी तो भरत जी ने कहा किस लिए जा रही है तुम्हारी जाने की जरूरत नहीं है फिर तो मैया कई कह कई कह कई बोली मैं चलूंगी और जो मैंने दो बार दान के लिए बार मांगा था मैं बस से उसको निष्कृति दे हुई जैसे मैंने ही बार मांगा था आज मैं ही बार वापिस लेती हूँ तुम लोग उनको भी साथ में ले गई वो भी गई उस समय रामचंद्र जी अपनी चित्रकूट की कुटिया में बैठे हुए थे सीता जी लक्ष्मण जी के साथ सारी जब भी ऊपर में आए तो राम और भरत जी का दोनों का मिलाप हुआ और पिता का समाचार सुना कि पिता तो मेरे लिए हर राम का करके पधार गए हैं परलोक में फिर दूसरे दिन उनका श्रद्धा और उनका पिंडदान किया इसके बाद में बड़ी सभा बैठी भर पे बैठे सब लोग बैठे इतने में महाराज जनक वहां पर उपस्थित हो गए वशिष्ठ जी ने कहा आज हमारा पोज कुछ इन्होंने हल्का कर दिया महाराज जनक जी का एक तरफ में सभा में रामचंद्र जी बैठे लक्ष्मण जी सीता जी एक तरफ में दूसरे तरफ में भर तीसरे दिन मैया और वहां के सभास और चौथों तो तरफ में ऋषि महर्षियों की एक बड़ी भारी सभा में भी वशिष्ठ जी उठ करके बोले आज सूर्य वंश का नाम डूब रहा है उसकी नाव को बचाने वाला कोई नहीं है मैं भी असमर्थ हूं आज हम लोगों का सौभाग्य है महाराज जनक विदेश अभी आ गए अब इस नाव का पतवार उनके हाथों में है वो कैसे रक्षा करते हैं ये अब उनको देखना है जनक जी बीच में बैठे उन्होंने राम की तरफ में देखा राम हम जो कहेंगे मानेगा आप जो कुछ कहेंगे आप पिता भी हैं गुरु भी हैं मानूंगा भरत की तरफ में देखा मैं जो निर्णय दूंगा तुम्हें ऐसे मानोगे अवश्य ही आप ही हमारे गुरु और पिता भी इस समय है पिताजी के नहीं रहने पर जरूर मानूंगा तब उन्होंने अपने गुरु का स्मरण किया उनके गुरु जी सदाशिव शंकर जी हैं उन्होंने कहा कि मैं अपने गुरु का ध्यान करता हूं हमारे मुख से जो कहेंगे वो गुरु के ही कहेंगे शंकर और तुम तो लोग को मानना पड़ेगा अपने गुरु को प्रणाम करके बोले देखो भरत का प्रेम महासागर के समान है अटल है और रामचंद्र जी का धर्म पालन हिमालय के समान है जितना भी पानी में डूब जाएगा किंतु तत्स से मस नहीं होगा भले ही रामचंद्र जी हिमालय हो कि आज भारत के प्रेम की जीत है भक्त की जीत हुई सुनकर के सभा के सारे लोग आनंद हो गए और सोचा जी अयोध्या का राज्य रामचंद्र लेंगे भरत भी लेकर के बहुत प्रसन्न हुए माताएं भी प्रसन्न हो गई इतने में महाराज जनक बोले देखो भरत की जीत हुई प्रेम की बात तो ठीक है किंतु प्रेम का भी एक नियम होता है 
प्रेमी क्या चाहता है यश उस प्रेम करने वाले को विचार करना पड़ेगा अर्थात भर्त को विचार करना चाहिए हमारा इष्ट देव जो है किस बात से वो प्रसन्न होगा वही चाहे करेगा अब भर्त बोले रामचंद्र जी से पूछो जो तुम्हारा इष्ट देव रामचंद्र है कि किस बात से प्रसन्न होगा अयोध्या का राज्य लौट करके लेने के लिए या वनवास के लिए आप उससे पूछो किस विषय में तो भरत जी ने कहा आज मेरी आंखें खुल गई हमारे जनक जी गुरु हैं अब तक मैं अपने प्रसन्नता की बात सोच रहा था मैं किसमें प्रसन्न रहूंगा ये भक्ति नहीं है भक्ति क्या है हमारा इष्ट देव क्या करना चाहता है उससे हम प्रसन्न रहेंगे उन्होंने रामचंद्र जी से कहा कि भैया तुम किस में प्रसन्न हो कहे प्रसन्नता की अब तो कोई बात नहीं रही महाराज जनक ने जो निर्णय दिया है तुम्हारी प्रेम की जीत हुई मैं अयोध्या का राज्य मैं स्वीकार करता हूं किंतु प्रतिनिधि के रूप में तुम अयोध्या लौट करके चौदह वर्ष तक उसकी सेवा करो राजा का मैं राजा हूं तुम मेरा प्रतिबंध ही पिन करके रहेगा और तुम फिर राज्य करो राज्य का देश देखभाल करो चौदह वर्ष के बाद में आऊंगा तो मैं राज्य हर जी ने कहा कि ठीक है चौदह वर्ष के बाद में एक दिन का भी विलंब हुआ दूसरे दिन तुम हमको नहीं देख सको रामचंद्र जी ने भर जी को छाती से लगा दिया नहीं 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 एक मिनट का भी लग नहीं होगा मैं तुरंत आ जाऊंगा भरत जी ने उनसे पैरों की खड़ा मांगी मैं नहीं ये खड़ा हूं आपका प्रतिनिधि रहेगा राज्य होगा राज्य करेगा ये खड़ा हूं और उसको सिर पर लेकर के रामचंद्र सीता को प्रणाम करके और उनसे आदेश लेकर के अयोध्या लौट गए अब चौदह वर्ष तक कर रहे वन में चौदह वर्ष के बाद में किस प्रकार से रामचंद्र जी रावण को मारकर सीता को लेकर के अयोध्या विमान से आए और किस प्रकार से लौटे वहां वहां नंदी ग्राम में गए और वहां से सब लोग आए भारतीय अब तक साथ थे जब भी राजमहल में रामचंद्र जी ने प्रवेश किया अभी राज्य तिलक नहीं हुआ था जब भी राजमहल में प्रवेश किया सबसे पहले कैकई के फोन में गए जब कैकई के फोन में पहुंचे तो देखा जब भरत को है नहीं भरत कहा गया लोगों से कहा जब पूछो देखो तो भरत कहा गया भरत जी ने तो कह दिया था जो उसे हमारा माता का कोई संबंध नहीं है तू मेरी माता नहीं है मैं तुम्हारा पुत्र नहीं इसीलिए वो साथ चला गया भरत को बुलवाया और कहा उनके चरणों में प्रणाम कराए अपने पहले प्रणाम किया गए कई तू माता को और फिर भरत से कहा तुम माता को प्रणाम करो मेरे आदेश से और बोलो ये मैया अब तो कई कई रोने लगी फपक फपक कर दे सारे लोग देख करके रोने लग गए आप लोग मत रहे 
यह कई कई का महान चरित्र भरत का भी महान चरित्र है किंतु तो उनको पीस का घूट नहीं पीना पड़ा और इसको किसी से नहीं कहा न बतलाया जे इसलिए हम लोग कह कई मैया को प्रणाम करते हैं भरत का चरित्र भी महान है मेरी इच्छा थी कि उसको भी कहेंगे कि तो अभी समय नहीं है आज यहीं पर मैं अपनी राम कथा का विश्राम देता हूं So Vashishthi, he sent a messenger to go and get Bharat and gave him the message that there is a very urgent thing because for which you should immediately return back uh, to Ayodhya. So uh, Bharatji, he took permission from his uh, maternal uncle and his parents and he came back. <coughs> so. Uh, क्या हुआ क्या करता है उठो नहीं 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 सो सो ही केम बैक एंड व्हेन ही एंटर द सिटी ही सॉ that before when he would come there will be all the people who would be there to receive him and but today the whole city looked like as if it was a widow uh, there was no joyful celebration and uh, there was no one to uh, greet him so he felt that something very uh, uh, bad has happened so first he went to mother kakai's uh, palace because normally maharaj dashrath would be staying there so when he went there he saw that kakai was also like a widow and she was wearing uh, white clothes and there was no uh, red uh, uh, sindoor she was wearing so she, he asked her what has happened so she said oh uh, your father has expired and uh, your brother shri ram has gone to the forest so uh, he asked why has this happened so she said oh because for your future to secure your future I had asked for two boons that Sri Ram should go to the forest and that you should become the king. And whatever I have done, I have only done, oh my dear son, I have only done for your good. So when Bharat heard this, he said, "Oh mother, you are not my mother from now on." And he became very upset. And he said, "Only because I am scared that if I kill you, Sri Ram will be upset. And only for that reason, I am not killing you. But from today." you and me don't have a relationship of a uh, son and mother from now on for me you are only a queen but not a mother so the queen uh, kakai first thought oh, for whom i had asked this boon even my son has rejected me so at that time mantra came and uh, shatrughan when he saw this he said only because of her this whole thing has happened so they pushed her down to the ground and hit her but bharat ji said hit her and uh, bharat ji said oh please leave her because if we kill her then shri ram will be very upset so they left her like that so mother katai uh, said oh i have done only this for you but shri uh, bharat just left from there and he went to uh, the assembly and then he asked what he should do he performed the last rites of his father and then asked uh, guru vashish that what is my uh, responsibility what is my duty now so guru vashish said that since your father has ordered you should now take care of this kingdom for the next 14 years but bharat said this is not possible for me as I will. I cannot. This kingdom belongs to Sri Ram, and I cannot be the king of this. I will take my entire army, 
every one of us would go, all the people in the assembly, and somehow or the other, we will bring Sri Ram back. And I will give this kingdom back to him, because this belongs to him only, and I will just serve him as his servant. So, right in the morning, they all left from Ayodhya, and they went to Chitrakoot. Lakshman saw this huge army coming, and he felt, oh, Bharat is coming to kill. So, he immediately got ready to fight. So, Sri Ram said, what is happening? Why are you getting ready to fight? So, he said, oh, Bharat is coming. First, he made us leave, and now he's coming to kill. So, there would be no uh, problem in the future. So, he said, today even Brahma and Vishnu, if they come to protect him, still I am going to kill him. So, Sri Ram said, please be patient. We should not take any action hurriedly. We should think about it, consider, and then make some decision. Let Bharat come. And if he wants to fight, then you should certainly fight with him and kill him. But I can tell you that there is no one on this planet like Bharat. His love for me is the highest. And there is no one like this who is a symbol of brotherly love as Sri Bharat. So the entire army, they stayed at the foothill. Chitrakoot is a hill, so at the foothill, the rest of the army stayed. And at that time, Sri Bharatji, uh, along with Kaushalya and Sumitra, and Vashishti and some key persons decided to go up the hill. At that time, Kakari also said that she would like to, also like to accompany. So, uh, <clears throat> so mother, uh, she said, uh, Bhara said, why? She asked Kaushalya, and Kaushalya agreed, okay, you can also come. But when Bhara ji saw this, he said, why are you coming with us? So she said, oh, I only asked him to leave, and now I'm going to take my two things back, and I would request him that you please come back and be the king. So then they went to the cottage of Sri Ram, and uh, there, Sri Ram and Bharat, uh, they met. There's a beautiful description of this in Sri Ram Charitmanis and Ramayan. So Bharat ji gave the news of the father uh, part, uh, passing away. So at that time, they performed shraddha and other ceremonies. And at that time, Maharaj Janak also came. And when Vashish ji saw this, he was very happy. And he said, oh, now the burden on my shoulders has been taken off because now more senior person has come. So next day in the morning, a big assembly was there. On one side, Sri Ram, Sita ji, and Lakshman sat. On the other side, Bharaji and other brothers and uh, the other key people from their uh, uh, assembly sat and from the court sat. And then on one side, the mothers were there, and on the fourth side, the great rishis and sages. So it was a big assembly. So Vashishti said at that time that it seems that the board of Surya Vansh, of this uh, Sun Dynasty, is going to sink now. And I don't have the capacity to rescue it. It is our great fortune that today among us, Maharaj Vashishti is here, uh, Mah uh, Raja Janak is here. So I would request Raja Janak, King Janak, to help us. So at that time, <coughs> Uh, Shri uh, King Janak, he looked at Sri Ram and said, whatever I ask you to do, will you listen? Uh, will you agree? He said, you are like my father and my guru, so whatever you say, instruct, I will do it. And then he asked the same thing from Bharat, and he also said that whatever uh, order you give me, I will accept. So King Janak said, my guru, his guru is Sadashiv, and meditating and praying, to his uh, Gurudev, he said, see, the love of Bharat is like a Mahasagar, a huge ocean. And the, and the uh, Dharampalan, the Maryada of Sri Ram, his decision to follow the rules and regulations and the order of his father is just like the Himalaya mountain. And both of them are in their own way. It is utter. It cannot be moved by any uh, way. But I consider that in this fight between the ocean and the mountain, the ocean has won. So Bharat's love is so deep that ultimately love is more important than any kind of maryada. So he said 
that I think Bharat is the winner. So as hearing this Bharat and everyone else was very very happy that this is finally, this is the victory of love and now Sri Ram will come back and will become the king. So, but he said there is one more consideration that we should think that in love, what is real love? In the love, the person should think that what does my beloved want? That consideration should be there. So Bharat should think that his uh, Ishtadev, uh, Sri Ram is worshipable for him. So what does Sri Ram want? So ask him, by what will he be happy? By taking the kingdom or by going to the forest? So Bharat asked Sri Ram, that please tell me by what would you be happy? Now my eyes have opened. So far I was thinking only of what would make me happy. But now I understand that I have to do what would make you happy. So Maharaj Janak is like our Guru and I have accepted what he has explained. So Sri Ram said that King Janak has already given his order and I will accept it. So I accept the kingdom of Ayodhya. But as a king, now I, am Bharat, I am now ordering you that you should take care of the kingdom for the next 14 years as my representative. So uh, Bharat, he agreed to accept the order of Sri Ram and he said, please come back at the end of 14 years. If you uh, delay even one minute, then I will give up my life. So, and he as Sri Ram's representative, he took his uh, kharaam, which are wooden sandals, and keeping on his uh, fourth head, he went to Ayodhya, and on behalf of Sri Ram, took care of the kingdom for the next 14 years. So, Sri Gurudev concludes that finally, when uh, Sri Ram came back to Ayodhya after 14 years, he first went to the palace of Queen Mother Kathai, and there he saw that Bharat was not there. So, because Bharat had left, he was living outside and he had already rejected his mother. He was not uh, going to her. So, Sri Ram called Bharat and told her that you should fall at the feet of your mother and say Maya to her. So, and then Kakai started crying very bitterly. So, and everyone started crying and Gurudev said, you should not cry even though they were all crying. So, this Gurudev says that this is such a great charitra of Kakai we pay our obeisances at her lotus feet for the great sacrifice she did so that Sri Ram could manifest his pastimes. And like this, Bharat Jaitra is also very glorious. But today we don't have time, so some other time we will describe it. Gaur Brahmananda. So today, Sri Gurudev uh, narrated this beautiful pastime and the drama is also going to be on this pastime of when Bharat comes and meets Sri Ram. So please make some space here so Gurudev can come down here. Uh, at once. Everyone else can also come down. And, uh, Hare Krishna. During morning walk we like you all to participate morning walk. But after morning walk don't hang around. You to the arrangement of Mr. Borma and Mrs. Borma, they have their family program in their house. So after morning walk, please move from there. Don't park inside the house. It's no other zone in the house. On our own cost and own rest. Hare Krishna. Also, just a couple of other announcements. Uh, the many devotees, as uh, we are still in the middle of the festival and we don't want the festival to end, but because of passage of time, it is going to end and a lot of devotees would be needing help to go back to the airport on Friday, on Saturday. So those who want a shuttle service back to the airport, please give your names by tomorrow to Pran Govinda Prabhu or Roy Krishna Prabhu. Please give them because otherwise if you come at last moment, we will not be able to make the arrangements. Please give your names by end of tomorrow to Pran Govinda Prabhu or to Roy Krishna Prabhu. Tomorrow's program, uh, the morning class will be given on Mana Shiksha by uh, Shripad Muni Maharaj.
And then at 10.30, Shyamarani Didi will be giving a class on Srimad Bhagavatam. And then at uh, 3 p.m., Shripad Padmanabh Maharaj will be giving a class on Sri Sikshashtakam. Tomorrow also there will be a drama play on Ajamil, right? On Dhruva. So tomorrow, we already heard the pastime of Guru Maharaj. Tomorrow there will be a pastime on it. Um, there is one other announcement. Many of the devotees here live in Central Florida and there is a nice program, TV program that comes on Bright House Network which is channel 40, 49 on Saturdays from 10 to 11 p.m. This program is being conducted by Sudarshan Prabhu and it shows the lectures of Guru Dev. There are bhajans and Sudarshan Prabhu also sings. So those devotees who live in Central Florida also tell your friends. They can watch this on channel 49 every Saturday. As I mentioned, we will have a class on palmistry for people who are interested, please contact us. That is scheduled to be on Thursday, 7 to 8. Thursday evening, 7 to 8. Yes, today is Tuesday. So, Prabhupada, I'm The cultivation of activities which are meant exclusively for the pleasure of Sri Krishna that are not covered by jnana, knowledge aimed at impersonal liberation, and karma, reward-seeking activity, and which is devoid of all desires other than the aspiration to bring happiness to Sri Krishna, is called Uttam Bhakti, pure devotional service. We hope that this drama can express a little what is the meaning of this verse. We are very foolish, so please excuse our mistakes and accept our Krishpanjali at your lowest speed. The pastimes of Lord Ramachandra are endless. Even Anantashesh himself 
continuously sings the glories of Sri Ram, but even with unlimited mouths, he is unable to touch the end in any way. We are praying that these infinite pastimes and teachings may appear in our hearts. One day, when Lord Ramachandra was a small boy, he was playing in the lap of Ma Maharani Kaikeyi. Kaikeyi's love for him was so great. Indeed, she loved him even more than her own son, Bharat. And Ram was also very attached to Kaikeyi. Of course I love you. Well, I have something to ask you. It is very important. Only you can give it to me. Anything, my Ram. You will have to sacrifice everything. Do you promise? Oh, Ram, you are my heart and soul. I would give you anything. When I grow up and return home after my marriage, my father will think of giving this palace to me. But I want you to ask him to give the house to Bart and banish me to the forest for 14 years. No! No, I cannot do something so cruel! But you promised. If you do not fulfill my request, everything will be ruined. All the so Everybody, all the demigods have been waiting for me to destroy these demons. These demons are all there. And thus, the great epic of the Ramayana begins. Just see the love of Kaikeyi. She would be hated by the universe. Her son, Bharat, would reject her and would never call her mother again. She sacrificed everything to fulfill the desire of her wrong. Some years later, Kaikeyi fulfilled her promise. The two brothers, Bharat and Satrugna, had gone to their maternal uncle's palace. And upon returning to Ayodhya, they noticed that all was silent. Usually the city was cheerful, and so many activities were joyfully taking place. But now, it was like a lady whose husband is dead, and who wears no decorations or ornaments. Seeing these and other inauspicious omens, Bharat and Satrugna became fearful. When they entered the royal palace and went to Kaikeyi's chamber, they were stunned to hear how Bharat had been banished to the forest for 14 years. And Bharat was to be crowned king. And in Ram's absence, their father had died of a broken heart. When Bharat heard this and the reason for it, he became completely inimical towards his mother. With great lamentation, he fell at the feet of his Gurudev, Vasishtha Rishi, and the royal assembly. Oh, who is such a sinner as I, on whose account Ram, Lakshman, and Sita have been exiled to the forest? The king, my father, ascended to heaven the moment Ram departed. Oh, how wretched am I! I am hearing everything, and yet I still remain alive. Oh, there are no words to describe the cruelty and the hardness of my heart. Clinging to this body, born of Kaikei, this desolate life, is exceedingly unfortunate. <laughs> My dear child Bharat, one is powerless against providence. Loss and gain, life and death, glory and infamy, all these lie in the hands of the Supreme. Trying to argue whom we should blame and with whom we should be angry is a waste of good intelligence. Do not lament for your father. 
There was nor shall there ever be a monarch like King Dasarath. Who can glorify him, my dear child? Who begat such virtuous sons such as Ram, Lakshman, Satrugan, and yourself? Please reverently obey the king's command. The king has bestowed the kingship upon you, and it is your duty to uphold the words of your father. Bharat, take up the throne of Ayodhya. Cease to grieve, my child, and obey the guru's orders. This life, everything is so uncertain. My son Ram is in the forest, and the great king, my husband, is in heaven. This is not a time to be faint of heart. You are the only support of your family, as well as the citizens of Ayodhya. Have courage, reverently obey your guru's order, cherish your subjects, and relieve the suffering of your family. <coughs> Mother Koshalya and my guru have given me excellent advice. It has been endorsed by all present and has even been ordered by that so-called mother. I know that everyone should take the advice of one's preceptors, parents, and elders and act upon them with a cheerful heart. Even though I fully realize this, my heart is not satisfied. My heart it's only for the service of Ram. I have been deprived of that privilege by the perversity of Maharani Kaike. Of what value is a kingdom if the lotus feet of Ram are not to be seen? It is only an abode of sorrow. An abundance of enjoyments are of no use to a diseased body. Similarly, what is the point of my life without Ram, the Lord of the Rams? Bowing my head to all, I lay my terrible distress before you. If I cannot see the feet of my beloved Ram, this agony of my soul will never leave. I can think of only one remedy. There is one resolve in my mind. At daybreak, I must proceed to meet my Ram and bring him back to Ayodhya to rule as king. Therefore, with your blessings, please allow me to depart. My child, I see that you are the embodiment of love for Ram. Any man who criticizes you out of ignorance because of your mother's misdoings will certainly be sent to the hellish planets, along with millions of his past generations. Oh, Bharat, you have thought out a good plan. By all means, let us all proceed to the forest. You've held a hand out to us while we were drowning in an ocean of grief. Yes, we shall all go to the forest and beg Ram to return. When the people of Ayodhya came to know of Bharat's decision, longing to see the moonlight face of their beloved Ram, they decided to also go with Bharat and bring their lord back to the kingdom. In the morning, the chief of sages, Vasishta Rishi, was the first to mount his chariot and lead the way. 
hosts of pious Brahmins then followed. The people of the city followed next, and together they all left for the forest of Chitrakoot. Leaving the city in the charge of faithful servants, and respectfully sending the whole party ahead, the two brothers, Parat and Satrugna, started last of all remembering the feet of Sri Ram Chandra. <laughs> Meanwhile, in the forest of Chitrakoot, Ram, Sita, and Lakshman were living very peacefully and happily. As Bharat and his party grew closer, Sri Ramchandra saw the dust in the air and the birds and beasts flying away in panic. He saw this and wondered in his heart what could be the reason. Lakshman climbed a tree and saw Bharat approaching with so many elephants and chariots. Misunderstanding Bharat's intention, he was filled with anger. Where's my bow? He's quickly approaching. Lakshman, why are you so angry? Who has come? It's Bharat and a vast army. If he thinks he can catch us off guard, he will surely be disappointed. Quickly, brother, grab your weapons. Let us not delay. Bard has come, but this is happy news. Why would we want to fight with our dear brother? My Lord, you are trusting by nature and our storehouse of love and affection. You have faith in everyone and see all to be just like yourself. Fool is given to the pleasures of the senses are seized with a lust for attaining power. Part was righteous, good, and wise. But now that he has attained your position as the ruler of Ayodhya, even he has transgressed the boundaries of righteousness. Finding an adverse situation, and knowing that you are alone in the forest, our brother has plotted against you. He has come to make his kingdom secure. Let me distinguish myself as your servant today, and I will teach Bharat a good lesson in battle. I am a Kshatriya, born in the race of the Raghu. Therefore, how can I tolerate such an insult? I shall easily defeat Bharat, as well as his younger brother, Satrugna. Lakshman, think about what you are saying. No great significant deed should be performed rashly and without reflection. Just remember the story of the woman and the mongoose. While the mongoose was guarding the woman's child, a snake came, and the mongoose killed that snake, thus saving the child's life. But when the woman saw the blood on the mongoose's face, she thought it was her child and immediately killed that mongoose. Do not make the same mistake. If one rushes into action, he will repent later. I have no doubt in your courage and strength. Certainly you can kill Bharat in the heat of anger. But when you learn that your suspicions were false, can you then bring him back to life? It is true that after tasting kingly, ma kingly power, most men become intoxicated and go mad. But my dear brother Lakshman, I swear by you, as well as by our father, that there is no one as good and innocent as Bharat. Darkness may swallow the midday sun. The earth may abandon its natural forbearance. And Mount Meru may be blown away by a puff of wind. But Bharat can never give up his love for me. Bharat and Satrugna left the large party and went ahead. Guided by the Nishada chief Guha, they grew close to Ram's cottage. Overflowing with affection and tears flowing from their eyes, the two brothers came upon Ram's footprints. After placing the dust that had touched the Lord's lotus feet upon their heads and hearts, 
they applied it to their eyes and experienced the same degree of joy as they would on seeing Ram himself. Observing Bharat's condition, the beasts and birds, and even inanimate creatures, were overwhelmed with emotion. Finally, the brothers arrived at the hermitage. On seeing the Lord of their life, they fell at his feet.